One of the uses of an ISIS server is to act as a proxy server. And what a proxy server does is it allows your Windows XP and other desktop computers to make requests to the ISIS server. And the ISIS server will then go and fetch the request from the internet or even pull them out of a cache on the ISIS server if it happens to have already visited that site recently and then provide the results back to the desktop client. In order to do this, we do have to set up some rules. So let's see what happens when, you know, right after we set up the ISIS server and everything kind of breaks down, we'll then take a look at how we go about getting it so that those clients can get out to the internet. So I'm going to switch over to a Windows XP computer here. So here I have a Windows XP system and let's go and open ourselves up a command prompt. So I'm going to click on run and type CMD. Now I'm going to type in ipconfig and we find out that the current IP address this, of this system is 172.16.1.5 and it is attempting to use the default gateway at 172.16.1.1 which happens to be the IP address of the inside interface on our ISA server. So when the client tries to go to the internet what happens is they kind of get this timeout. It just kind of just stays there and just hangs. Well, what actually is taking place right now? Well, it's busy trying to go to Microsoft's website right now, www.microsoft.com, and do this first connection type thing. So that either says we have a DNS problem or we can't get out to the internet. You know, we might have done a DNS lookup correctly, but we can't actually get to that web page. Well, if we click more information here, it tells us that that's exactly the same the problem we just described. It could be DNS, it could be uh, HTTPS, it could be a variety of different things. Well, so now we're going to go to the ISIS server. Actually, before we do that, let's just go back here. Let's try a different website, just in case. So we're going to try to go to learnitfirst.com. And same result. We're busy trying to find that site or trying to connect to that site, and we can't. So we're going to flip over to our ISA server. And so here we are on the ISA server. And I'm going to bring up the ISA software management program. So underneath my server's name, under the firewall policy, I'm going to go and build a new access rule. So over here on the right, I want to say allow internal users to access the internet. So that's the name of my rule. We'll click next. And this is an allow rule because we're allowing these people to do that. So we'll click next. And the selected protocols, yep, let's click add. And they are probably going to need under the web, HTTP, HTTPS. Now notice I'm just double clicking on it. I'm not having to close the window or even go down and click the add button. It's putting them on the list over there on the right. Now, the one of the most important ones that not everybody realizes right off the bat might be that you need to allow them DNS. Now, if you've got your internal servers running DNS, your clients may be pointing to them. So this may not be directly affecting the clients, but remember, your servers may need to go out to the internet to DNS lookups. And if they're being passed through the ISIS server, you have to worry about them too. So we're gonna allow DNS queries to go out. We don't have to worry about this one here called DNS server because we're not having, uh, we're not talking about incoming DNS connections, we're talking about outgoing. So we'll click close. So with those three protocols and we'll click next. And this rule applies to traffic from these sources. So we need to click the add button. We need to drop down networks and say we want it from our internal. And if you remember when you set up the ISA server, you told it what IP addresses are on the inside of your network so that it receives traffic from those addresses, it, it knows that they're uh, from the inside of my network and headed to the outside world. So we can click close on that. And then we're going to hit next. And we want to allow the traffic rules. So when we click allow, we want to add the networks to allow them to the external networks. And we'll click add, close, next. This applies to all users. That's fine for now. So we'll click next and finish. Now, the change won't work yet. The change won't work until we say apply. So now we're applying that change. And once that's down, we'll click OK. 
And now our screen should refresh here, and that rule is now made. So let's go over to our XP. And our XP was giving us when we tried learnitfirst.com, it didn't work. Let me hit a refresh now. And when I hit a refresh, presto, the website comes up. Why? Well, it's making the request, and the ISA server's rule says, yes, you can do the DNS lookup, and yes, you can go out and grab that web page. So everybody say hi to Scott. Hi, Scott. And you're now good to go to surf other websites as well. For example, let's try learnexchange.com. And in just a moment here, we should get the page. There we go. We got the Learn Exchange website up as well. Well, that was easy. So go check out some of the other videos on the website.